Richard is out today, so we have the wonderful Reverend Ed Bonham with us this morning. And uh, I'm Gwen, and uh, here we go. Yes, we're happy you're here. If you uh, are not connected with us already, you can fill out a, a Connect card. Um, let us let us know your, your contact information, and we'll keep you informed. Uh, not too many emails or texts, just uh, once in a while, let you know what's going on. And if you have any prayer concerns or other feedback, anything else you want to offer, you can put those on the comment cards as well and drop those in the offering plate later in the service. Um, so now we will uh, enjoy our prelude. Um, we'll center ourselves in preparation for this day and this morning of worship. the worship. We come to worship this morning for different places. Oh God, you won't be far from us. We come to worship this morning from this, for different reasons. Oh God, do not be far from us. We experience the presence of the Spirit in different ways. Oh God, do not be far from us. We hear Jesus' word with different ears. Oh God, do not be far from us. Deny yourselves. Oh God, do not be far from us. Take up your cross. Oh God, do not be far from us. Would you all please stand and join us as we sing, Come Now, It's Time to Worship. Just as you are. 
Okay. Uh, now is our prayer of confession. Um, to open our hearts to God is to risk vulnerability. Oh, sorry, you can be seated. Uh, my bad, sorry. Uh, to open our hearts to God is to risk vulnerability, judgment, and condemnation. But throughout the scriptures, we learn that God is merciful and just, slow to anger, and ready to forgive. Let us then risk our confession first in silent prayer. And now please join me in the unison prayer of confession. God of tender mercies, we admit that sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves. We anger at the slightest insult and imagine great vengeance upon those who wronged us. We laze about in the good news of faith and do not consider the deep commitment of faith. We care for ourselves, but not for others. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us. Help us to repent and make us whole. Amen. Based on the promise of Scripture and in the name of Jesus, we are all forgiven. Amen. Uh, now it is the time in our service when we pass the peace. So uh, you can say to uh, someone else, the peace of Christ be with you, and they can answer, the peace of Christ be with you, or and also with you. Uh, let's do a uh, peace sign this morning. Oh, no, Bob says fist bump. All right, we're going for the fist bump. Um, yes, and then after that, we will have questions, so you can gather in a small group. Peace. <laughs>
you can be seated. Yes. Okay. 
The scripture reading for today is Mark 8, 27 to 38. Jesus went up with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do the people say I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, Who do you say I am? And Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must be, undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. He turned to look at his disciples and he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any, if any want to come, become my followers, let, him, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives will lose it. And for those who lose their life for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my word, and in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes to in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, it's great to be here again. Boys, boys love coming. Love, love the band. And uh, great to see all of you again. Uh, it was Mark Twain who said, that there's always two vital moments in anyone's life. The first one is the moment that we are born. And the second one is when we finally decide why we were born. Who are we? Why are we here? What should we do with our lives? For the first 10 years of my life, I lived in this little town in Northeast Nebraska, far from anything, called Craig, Nebraska. It was a town of about 300 hardy souls. And of course, everybody knew each other. We were all kind of basically related in the whole town. And one of my first real, what I would call friends, was a kid by the name of Danny McMurtry. I know you're thinking, Danny McMurtry? It, it, it fit right in with his brothers, uh, Pat and Mike, all right? Danny, when he was in the first grade, got rheumatic fever. I don't know if you know rheumatic fever, but it affects the heart, it affects the muscles, it affects the bone. It, it is a side effect of strep throat. Danny nearly died. He was out of school for three months. And when he came back, he was frail. His heart wasn't working right. 
He couldn't run kind of like everybody else. And he was so far behind in school that finally they had him stay back. There are a lot of things Danny McMurtry couldn't do. But there was one thing that he was great at. There was one thing that probably I've never met a person better at than what Danny could do. He was so good at this that I was in awe. Danny McMurtry could lie. <laughs> yeah, he was a world-class liar. I've never met any better. I mean, for example, Danny's dad. Uh, Danny's dad was a house painter. Everybody knew that. You'd see him walking down the street and he'd have these painted clothes. But that was just a cover for Danny's dad's real job, which was working as an FBI agent. Yes, every day a helicopter would fly from Omaha 75 miles to Craig, Nebraska, land and pick up Danny's dad for work. The painting, that was just a cup. Danny's dad, actually, Danny's dad saved J. Edgar Hoover. That's why he got the special privilege of having a helicopter come to the town of Craig. Yeah, Danny was pretty good. Even though he couldn't run too fast, he'd already been clocked under 10 seconds in a 100 meter dash. Plus, plus he knew karate and kung fu. And not only did he know those martial arts, but he learned them from none other than, and nobody here will know this name, Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne was our favorite wrestler, all right? And Danny, of course, knew him personally. Also, he had personally met Royal Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. Yeah, there was a lot of things he couldn't do, but that's one thing he could do. Yeah. My mother told me that Danny would lie when the truth would save him. But I defended him. I defended him to the nth degree, to our other friends, to my family. I defended him. I think deep down inside that I knew that he was just making all this stuff up. But I wanted it to be the truth. I really did. I lived in a town of 300 people in one of the smallest populated states in the United States. And I knew everybody. And I wanted Danny to be able to to do come I wanted to be a friend to Danny. I wanted a, a, a friend whose dad was a hero. And I know now that the fault was not in Danny. The fault was in me. Our scripture lesson today, and thank you again, this is for reading that for us. <laughs> Has Peter and Jesus in a conversation, and it begins with Jesus asking the question that I asked at the beginning of this little sermon, which is, who do people say that I am? And Peter answers, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And he's proud to say it because he's proud of Jesus and he knows what Jesus is going to do. And Jesus is going to defeat the Romans. He's going to run them out of Israel and he's going to bring in a new kingdom, a kingdom of David, renewed in Israel. And so he's very happy when Jesus says, you're right here. You're right, that's who I am. I'm the Messiah. But then right away, the scene changes. And when Jesus starts talking about what must happen to him, how he's going to be crucified, how he's going to be given over to his enemies, how he's going to be killed, Peter says, oh no, no, not at all. You're Jesus. 
You're not going to go through all that stuff. You're my best friend. And that's when Jesus says, Get me high of me, Satan. For what you say doesn't come from God. It comes from you. Peter wanted Jesus to be that savior that would overthrow the Romans. But Jesus' calling was different. Jesus knew who he was. And he was called to give his life for us. So he scolded Peter and said, you're, you're only worried about yourself. I'm worried about humanity. I want to save not just you, Peter, but everyone. Peter wanted it so bad that he chose to believe a lie rather than the truth. And maybe that's why when he was confronted on Good Friday evening by a little slave girl, he said of his friend, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. He didn't turn out to be what I wanted him to be. Who are you? What is your truth? What is your call? I was just thinking back at the end of, at the end of June. I had served God and Christ through the United Methodist Church for 50 years. Started when I was 22 years old, first year student in seminary. Serving two African American congregations in the middle of Missouri. A kid from Craig. And for 50 years, I would wake up every morning and I would say this little prayer. God help me do this. Sometimes the good news isn't the happy news. Sometimes God calls us to take up our cross and follow him. And that's not an easy task. There's a great old story that I love about the three baseball umpires who were having a little disagreement. And the first umpire said, well, when they call balls and strikes, he says, I call them like I see them. And the second umpire said, well, if ball and strikes, I call them like they are. And the third umpire says, they ain't nothing till I call them. <laughs> We ain't nothing. We ain't nothing until God calls us. And that's a hard thing to hear because sometimes it's a hard thing to do. But we must remember always that Christ came to save us. He died for us. He lived for us. He was crucified for us. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, the life. Peter didn't want to hear the truth part of that. Just too hard. But I also believe that when God calls us, he equips us. Every morning for 50 years, I asked him. And every day, I made it through. God gives us opportunities galore to let the truth of Christ shine through us. God gives us opportunities galore to reach out to others, offers us tremendous opportunities to find out who we really are. We are blessed to know that God is always with us, and that's the truth, that God loves us and constantly surrounds us with the power of his spirit, and that's the truth and he never stops calling never stops trying it is great good news even though sometimes it's hard good news and also for 
for you and for me. It's the truth. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of your love in our lives, for the gift of Jesus Christ, and for the power of your spirit which surrounds us all. stand to sing our, our hymn, The Song. the Apostles Creed, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, existing for us time and distance, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the restoration of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, now we come to a time of prayer. Uh, if you have a prayer request you'd like to share with the congregation, no. Yeah. I'd like to ask a prayer for my grandson, Jacob Jr. He goes to the to the church tomorrow. We're asking for God's mercy. God's mercy with Jacob Jr. Yes, that is. When he's at the court tomorrow. Yes, Pop. Yes, happy birthday, Harriet. All right. Uh, will you please join me in prayer, uh, and then we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for uh, Pastor Ed being with us this morning for the message that we heard. Um, we thank you for your love and your grace in our lives, and thank you for calling us into following you, and we thank you that you you equip us and you guide us for uh, the work to which you call us. And uh, Lord, we ask your mercy 
um, for Jacob Jr. as he goes before the judge tomorrow. We pray that um, that he be granted mercy and that you continue to to guide and direct his life. Lord, we thank you for Harriet. Pray that you bless her today on her birthday and that you guide her in, in this next year of her life and that you do good things um, in her life. Lord, we thank you for all of our, our September birthdays that we've got to celebrate. Um, we pray your blessing over our, everyone who's, who's celebrating their birthday this month, Lord. And, uh, we ask your your guidance and we pray that we would hear your call, Holy Spirit, in, in our lives um, to know how to live our life each day. Um, we thank you that you strengthen us each day for the day um, at hand. Lord, we, we commit ourselves to you as we um, pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that our Lord gave himself up for us, for you, for me, for all humanity, he took bread and he blessed and broke it and offered it to the people and said, take this, for this is my body broken for you. And after supper, he took a cup. He blessed it and gave it to them and said, drink this, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. The body and blood of Christ. O oh Lord, we thank you for your precious gifts that change not only our view of life, but our view of death. In all the hard goings, in all the difficulties, we know through your blood and through this blood, through this blood, bread, that you are with us in and for all things. I would like the persons who are helping with communion to come forward now, if you would, please. And as they're making their way forward, let me say a couple of brief words. First and most important is that we in the United Methodist Church practice an open communion. That means that all people, no matter what your denomination, are welcome at Christ's table because it is Christ's table and Christ did come. You'll be offered a small piece of bread and a cup. I think the best way is to come down the middle aisle and then return by the, by the side aisle, although I'm the rookie in this, so I kind of trust you that. Spoken for you, the body of Christ spoken for you, the body of Christ spoken for you. The body of Christ broken. See, I do things differently, don't I? No, I'm not. No, I'm going to give you a second one too. The body of Christ broken for you. Hang on. Christ shed for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, 
The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may come forward now. Thank you, Lord, for these your gifts. May they strengthen us for service in your name. Amen. Glenn, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, it is time for our offering. So, uh, yes, this is our opportunity to give back a, a portion of what God has given to us and to contribute to the, uh, the ministry of this church in, in this city and also in our conference um, at our uh, church conference last week um, the district superintendent Ashley said I don't know are you keeping up with your apportionments and he said yes we're sending them in um, our apportionments if you don't know it's kind of a United Methodist thing we send in a portion of our offerings every three months and uh, those go to support other uh, ministries of the conference. So that includes things like um, like training pastors in Africa and like doing work up throughout our conference here in, in Phoenix and up into the, like toward the Las Vegas area and, and down into Southern Arizona and everywhere in between. Um, and all kinds of different um, pieces like that. It's a really cool thing of our United Methodist Connection. So, uh, I invite you to, to give and to enjoy our offertory. Yes. Uh, can I get the ushers, please? Lord, we thank you for 
all the gifts that you've given us, and we thank you for this opportunity to participate in the, the work that you are doing. Um, and we thank you and ask your, your blessing on these gifts and offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. So I think that's really important, especially this year. Uh, it is Monday, October 14th at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Uh, if you want details about uh, where that is or more info, it's on the website. There you can see the link there or you can um, just go to our homepage and go to the events. And our next one. Uh, this is an opportunity to support uh, the Emerge Center Against Domestic uh, Violence, is it since against domestic abuse, and we will be collecting items during the entire month of October, so get excited. Uh, you can bring them 
to the bins, uh, which will be in the uh, the entryway, the narthex, and then also in the tater room. So uh, if you want to know what kind of items, that also is on our website. You'll see the link there as well. And finally, we have a, um, a community walk that will be uh, called Footsteps for Healing. It's on uh, Saturday, October 19th. That's Bethany's birthday. And um, you can also find more info on the website for that. So uh, yeah, get out and support things in the community. This is a, be some great opportunities to do stuff uh, to connect with others in our community and to support others who might be having a difficult time. So uh, those are, I think, all of our announcements. Um, feel free to bring stuff in for the food pantry, as always. And uh, we will have snacks, as usual, over in the table room after service. So thank you. And uh, let us join in our closing hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forever. Go in peace and take peace with you. Amen. 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 All God's people
Thank you.